All right, Jamin Moore here with a quick hit aftershock. I am super excited. The first round draft pick, number 13 overall uh, of the San Jose Earthquakes, Jamar Ricketts from CSU Northridge joins us. Jamar, uh, thanks for doing this. Welcome to the Earthquakes and welcome to the aftershock. How are you feeling right now? Uh, thank you for having me, first off. Um... It's still surreal, like everything's still setting in, you know. Um, I've just been feeling the love, feeling the, the presence of everybody that's been supporting me, and it's, it's it's an honor, honestly. I'm thankful. So when you heard your name was called yesterday, like, first off, what's your initial reaction? How Did you have a good sense that, you know, spending some time in California, that the earthquakes were interested in you? And then, you know, uh, how was it? Uh, who was with you at the time that, that you learned about this? Uh, so I had I had a lot of family and friends. Um, I think there was probably about 20 to 25 people. Oh. Yeah, uh, I think I feel like I feel like I have a big support staff, like with my friends uh, from my childhood, my family, my my coaches that helped me uh, through my whole career. Um, but I did have a feeling that I was going to. I was going to end up with, with the quakes, you know, but you never know. You never know with trades or like everything, everything was just up. So I was still really anxious. Um, and the biggest thing is I wanted to to make my family proud, you know. So when it got to San Jose and then they started counting down um, and then it said the pick is in, everybody was just, everybody was just locked in. So I was, that's when I started feeling my heart pump a little bit. You know, and then once I heard my name call and hear everybody start screaming and hugging me, it was just, it was surreal. Like I, I my brother started crying, my mother was tearing up, and oh yeah, it was phenomenal. That's that's amazing. Congratulations, and and that's Thanks. just such a great story to have that kind of support staff around you. I definitely want to dig into some of that background because you have had quite a journey through MLS Next, back probably even when it was still the U.S. Development Academy and uh, making all your way now through the college ranks to get selected in in, in the first round of the MLS draft. Um, and there was a period of time there because of that uh, trade that happened at the number 12, there was kind of this concern of like, oh, why did, why did you know, was there a trade up ahead of the Quakes in order to get the 12th spot? And then it sat there with the pick being in for like four minutes or so. It, it seemed like an eternity. Even the Quakes fans in our chat were like, just tell us who the pick is. Um, I imagine that four minutes was an eternity for you as well. Yeah, it felt real long. Like, I like what they were saying. They was talking. They was doing what they had to do, you know. So I understood. But everybody was anxious. Like, we were just waiting, waiting, waiting. But um, when it finally did come and then they said the pick is in, uh, and then San Jose has selected Jamar Ricketts. That's when that's when it set in. Like I realized my life was was going to take off and change from that moment. I would love it, you know, if I had enough time in the world to watch, you know, all the college soccer I possibly could. Um, I'm up in the Pacific Northwest myself. Was in the Bay Area for 17 years, uh, so I got to follow Washington a bit this past season and, and their journey. Um, but didn't get a ch chance to check you out. So when I saw the pick was in, I immediately hit the hit the Y scout and started to pull the video. And man, your athleticism looks like it's off the charts. Um, showing off some moves. You had a nice little YouTube video that you had put out there also to, to kind of promote yourself a bit. Um, and you scored like seven goals last year, got a couple of assists. I mean, had a nice college career. And some of those goals were just really nice you know finishes and things like that like i think fans are really excited about what you potentially can bring to this team yes uh i've been getting a few dms from uh quakes fans uh supporters and it's just i i feel the love already i haven't even i haven't even gotten over there and i just feel the love like they're they're excited to see me play i think somebody commented uh um great potential or whatever and it's just something that like i once again, I feel the love. Like, I feel like people are, um, they have faith in me. And that's that's really, really all you need. Like, having people that are backing you and knowing that you can do it and take it a step further, that's, that's really what it's all about. So, yeah. The first thing that I think, you know, analysts and fans try to do, including maybe some of the commentary on Apple TV yesterday, is to kind of 
put players quickly into a box, right? And to go like, oh, he's he's a winger or he's he's an outside back. But it was interesting because as I looked at some of your college tape across a number of different uh, games yesterday that uh, I had available to look at, you played different positions. It felt like almost, almost every game, sometimes you were a striker, sometimes you were on the left, sometimes you were on the right, sometimes you're sitting a bit deeper. You know, like that's, I think presents a lot of tantalizing possibilities, I'm sure, for Luchi Gonzalez. But like, you know, what do you really enjoy and what is it that you think you uh, specifically can bring to the San Jose Earthquakes to really kind of make a case for yourself in preseason? I love this question, honestly, because uh, when most people ask me what's my best position, I honestly just tell them on the field, you know. Uh, for my team at CSUN, I, I feel like I was needed in, in different positions at different times. So whether it was somebody to go uh, hunt the ball in the box and, and try and be a poacher in the box and be a nine, he was I was the guy. You know, I would go in, do what I had to do um, to help my team. If it was somebody to – if they needed somebody to beat somebody down the wing and – isolate him and get crosses in I was that guy once again you know I just I just felt like whatever the team needed I was just gonna I was there because I for me my biggest thing is I work hard no matter what so even if I'm having a bad day I will always work hard if I got to make a 60 yard run back if I got to lock down the the most skillful player on the other team I pride myself on on doing my job the best I can you know um so of course, like I like scoring, I like being in the attacking third, but I also like not being scored on, you know. So I also like being able to stop whoever's their threat is and and take. Oh, we good? Oh yeah. And if we're in the midfield, if if they need somebody to to uh, hold down the midfield, I feel like I could I could do that role and, and produce, you know, elevate the level a little bit. Yeah, certainly, you know, there's going to be, I think, opportunities to look at all those skills. And and uh, one of the things they did call out on Apple TV was that you did have that defensive ability, ability to sit deeper and be able to play some defense. But then when the attack is on, what I really loved in your tape is I saw you over and over again winning a ball and immediately pressing it forward, challenging that back line, forcing someone to take an action on you before you, you know, got rid of the ball. I feel like that's something that uh, is a great skill set that I'm going to love to see you kind of bring to the earthquakes in the last year. Who taught that to you? Like what coach instilled in you that that kind of, hey, when you win the ball, immediately try to press it forward? Or is that just something that's inside of you? Um, I, I would honestly give it give a lot of it to um, my coaches, like my my Cedar Stars coach and my college coach, because um, also my Ventura, my Ventura coach, my uh, USL two coach, because uh -huh. uh, they always told me you're most likely going to be faster than the guy that's defending you. You know, so just have confidence in yourself to one move go, one move go. And I always had that in the back of my head, rotating, and rotating. So when I did get the opportunity to get the ball, my first instinct was go to goal. You know, but I will say, like not even on the soccer ter on a on soccer basis, um, Russell Westbrook is somebody that. I would say I kind of idolize because um, mm -hmm. his mindset, you know, um, he's for me, he's like a dog. You know, he, he after, play after play. He'll keep going at you, keep going at you. He'll miss shots. He'll turn the ball over. But the mindset that I'm going to keep coming back and back and just keep doing what I have to do uh, to to help my team. That's something I I try to instill in my game. And I think that also plays a, a role in why I'm always ready to keep going. Yeah, I, I really like that. I, I as a someone who I'm wearing my soccer analysis sh uh, sweatshirt right now, yeah, as a guy who analyzes the game, I really enjoy players who play that way. I'm really going to look forward to to getting to see you uh, in preseason this year. So before we let you go, um, kind of uh, flashback for me a little bit. You mentioned your, uh, you know, your coach at Ventura, and you mentioned MLS next. You know, talk about kind of the the preparation as a youth, and then the opportunity to get to feel the professional game a bit in USL too, and how well you feel that those additional steps in the U.S. you know soccer pyramid have helped you as a player be able to prepare yourself for the professional game. So honestly, I think it started even before I got to um, MLS next. Well, at the time it was DA, development right. academy. 
um, because I would say I was more of a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. um, like I only made varsity for my high school, my senior year. Um, and I still wasn't, I still wasn't getting a lot of playing time, honestly. Um, but I always worked hard. I was always optimistic because I knew once I got my opportunity, uh, I would do well because I always had my head down in practice. I was, I was always working hard no matter what, you know, just having a good time, uh, being around good players. So I took, I took being at the bottom and I brought that with me to MLS next. So I knew that I always had to outwork, outwork my opponents, outwork everybody on the field, you know? So when I got to MLS next, um, I played maybe in total, I probably say I played maybe 10 games with Cedar stars, but in each of those 10 games, I knew there was going to be somebody watching. So I always had, I was always working hard. If I had to make that extra run in the 90th minute, I was, doing that if I had to track back the whole field to to stop a, a counterattack I was doing that. I was always um I was always putting in the extra effort and then that also carried over to college because now once I got to college it becomes physical and um you really can't take a playoff ever because if you take a playoff then now your, te your team's playing a man down and the way college works everything is so quick um so once I got to college I still had that same mentality so it just I just trained the way I play Honestly, like I, I work hard in practice every day. And you can see that when I start playing, like I, I, I motivate my teammates. I, I do the extra work and I think that's what will help me in the next level. You know, I'll always, it's one thing I value, value in myself. My big best attribute is that I always work hard, always. Well, there are a lot of fans who are very excited uh, that you got picked yesterday. And uh, obviously you're already mentioning how much you're feeling the love. I think you'll feel more, now, as fans get to kind of check out this video and get to know you better, really appreciate you stopping by the Aftershock, Jamar. Really nice to talk to you. Hoping I'll get to uh, see you down in Coachella here in preseason and get to get to meet you face to face. But congratulations again, and uh, really kind of uh, looking forward to uh, all the next steps now. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, thanks, fans, for joining us, and we'll have more preseason content for you shortly on the Aftershock. Thanks again, Jamar.